Welcome everyone, and this is day three of Neuroemergence 2022. And thank you for everyone who has been joining us for the past two days. And we have such a lineup for today, especially since it is Neurodiversity Pride Day. So I'm gonna give it to Chirk to tell us what's to expect, what to expect for today, and yeah, some words of inspiration from one of our heroes. Well, welcome everybody uh, to the third day of the Neuroemergence Online Summit, and we're super happy to have you here again. And there'll be many interesting speakers speaking today. Well, I'm here first to tell you a little bit about the program of the day. First, we are having a kickoff, and I have a special one because we're having a keynote by Ms. Barb Cooks. Uh, Ms. Barb Cook. <laughs> uh, we're very happy to have her here, and uh, she is the founder of the Neurodiversity Happy Inc. Uh, after this, there will be a learning lab and sharing circle uh, moderated by Saskia Wenneker and Lani Yelendiev. And the name of it is called Moving Out of Your Comfort Zone and Inviting Courage, which is wonderful because the theme of this Neurodiversity Pride Day is Differentness Takes Courage. After this, between 2 and uh, 12 and 2, there is free time where you can roam the vast gather universe. You can play a game in the busy room. You can relax and meditate in the calm room. But mainly, uh, one of the interesting things is our presentation room, where many interesting speakers created presentations, especially for this day or for this conference. And you are here to be able to witness them. If you go to the presentation room, you will also find conversation tables that you can uh, have a conversation with other people about the things you just watched. Wonderful. At two o'clock, we'll be sharing a talk uh, from Dan Harris from Neurodiversity in Business. Uh, very happy to have his contribution as well. And at 2.30 uh, CE team time, there will be a panel session promoting the win-wins in parenting and relationships. It will be moderated by the delightful Alex Brooks and Lani Yelendiev. And the guest speakers of today, the guest panelists, will be Saskia Wenniger, Helen Davies, our beloved friend, Joan Lamb, and Shannon Russell. Excellent. Dusty Shapura, you're missing out on somebody. Dusty is and, so good joining us. <laughs> and Dusty Shapura, also another good friend of ours. <laughs> then at four o'clock, the informal meet and greet starts. Uh, this will be done in the meet and greet room. And you can just hang out there and, and have chats. You can also do a little dance in the dancing arena. It is all fine. You be you. And then at 4.30, there will be closing remarks, and these will be done by uh, Lana Yelendiev and Saskia Wenneker, the co-founders of the Neurodiversity Education Academy. And we're happy to have them close the day off. Well, today is also a very special day. You've probably seen it behind me already with the big banner. It is Neurodiversity Pride Day. Each year, June 18th, we celebrate the value of neurodiversity and the contribution that neurodivergent minds have to society. It's a day to celebrate ourselves, uh, it's less of a day of an awareness and it's more a day of pride in reflecting onto ourselves what we appreciate about the things we have to offer. Um, yeah, and, and rejoice in that. To, uh, to add that fuel a little bit more, I'm here to share a snippet from Judy Singer's poem that she pronounced last year in our keynote. And we distilled a poem from it. And to honor that memory, uh, we had Lyric uh, come speak for the keynote this year. And this will be live starting at four o'clock in the day. All the Neuroemergence Online Summit participants can see it before this time as a special secret. But here, I'd love to share uh, Judy's poem with you before we move to our keynote speaker, Mark Cook. We are a neurodiverse planet and everybody is different in it. It's a world where everybody can ask for their needs. Because in an ideal society, we give to each person according to their needs and require from each person what they're able to give. We may never ever reach it, but we must continue to strive to meet that. And I think our movement is really doing just that. We have made important progress and it is not our responsibility. It's not your responsibility to finish the world and the work of perfecting the world but you're not free to desist from it either. Keep at it. Keep being yourself. Keep trying to do the right thing, the good thing, and don't let yourselves be divided. 
all neuro-minorities need to stick together, face whatever challenges come up, because it's not going to necessarily be easy, but there are going to be fabulous conversations, fabulous insights, and fabulous encounters along the way. And one wonderful way to support these fabulous conversations and encounters is the Neuroemergence Online Summit. So without further ado, I would love to give the word to our first keynote speaker of the day, Barb Cook. Thank you. Thank you. To start the day, um, I would like to first up acknowledge, uh, do an acknowledgement for country here where I live in Gympie, Queensland, Australia. I acknowledge the Gubby Gubby people as the traditional custodians of the land on which I am speaking from for this event today and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. I pay my respects to elders past and present and continue a commitment to the amplification of their voices. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be joining us here today. Now, where does the story begin? You would think by the time we hit, hit this life, we'd have enough insight and knowledge to understand the world around us, or at least have a grasp of what is expected while occupying planet Earth. Well, obviously not, because that was not my case until I hit my 40s. My diagnosis of autism, ADHD and dyslexia didn't eventuate until six weeks prior of my 40th birthday. You know that saying, life begins at 40? Well, that statement could not have been more spot on if it tried. Congratulations, here's your certificate on surviving life thus far. Now, this will give you a clue as to what life is really about. Autism, good luck, tally ho. It was those words that scrolled through my head like subtitles on a foreign movie. In the background, the bugle to daring ensued. Let the hunt begin, the hunt for knowledge in my case. After fudging my way through the past 40 years, I finally had some clarity and a sense of freeing from the internal anguish that I was never, ever going to understand this damn strange world around me. I did actually believe I was losing my mind at one point as I could not figure out for the life of me how people existed, let alone navigated life on Earth. As far as I could ascertain, I was the problem. And no matter how hard I tried mimicking or masking, I was essentially, I just could not perform naturally like my fellow neurotypical being. And I was tired of it all. Up until this point, I had literally resigned myself away from never being able to function appropriately in society until one fateful day. My local community centre, which was in a small town uh, at that time I was living in, brought together a day of speakers centred on women's health and wellbeing. Venturing in and positioning myself at the back of the room, a spot I readily scanned for on arrival at such events, had me sitting there flicking through brochures while doing my damnedest to filter out the awfully high-pitched chit-chat that irritated like a splinter in the index finger. One of those splinters that got in too deep and you cannot get out, but it will constantly annoy you and remind you it's still there. There was interesting presentations to be had, and I smiled when they announced the next speaker was running late for her presentation. I thought to myself, this is so me. So the organisers of the event would bring forward the following speaker of the morning to cover for this scheduled missing speaker. As the scheduled speaker that they had there, all the way their insights of a life of wonderment and wellness, it became enormously obvious that the late presenter was trying her utmost to sneak up to her chair that was on the back of the stage where she would perform. Obviously, the furniture got annoyed with her lateness and added to her challenges of trying to take a seat quietly. You know, those bloody tables and chairs certainly know how to manoeuvre themselves into position, ready to strike at the most inappropriate moment. So with a trip and a thud, the late speaker had arrived. With her forgotten notes of wild windswept hair, the furniture challenge presenter took stage, a local doctor. With my analytical and judgmental thoughts, I questioned internally how on earth did she become a doctor if she can't even win a duel with a chair? And she's fat. Really, how can you be fat, uncoordinated, and be a doctor? 
for some reason, I had conditions and conditions to believe that those who offer help with their health should be a shining example of that. Perfection, wellness, measure up to the figures that we're led to believe that we must strive for. There was that rigid conditioning thinking again, but the rigidness way that she spoke. The words were not of perfection, but about accepting yourself and being kind to yourself, and that we're all valuable and deserve a life that makes us happy. She cared so very deeply. And I reflect on how I charged up like a ransom ball after her presentation, hoping for an opportunity to speak with her. Well, more like I just opened up my mouth and a tidal wave of words pulled forth. I did wonder if she thought I had actually lost my mind. Well, that's what I was thinking, that she might be thinking, as we tend to overthink everything and more so after the incident like this. Stop thinking. But in reality, she just stood there and smiled, took in everything I was saying and told me to come and see her at a little doctor's practice nearby. When I told her I thought I was crazy, she just looked at me with compassion and said, no, you're not. It takes just a moment like this to completely change your world, set you on a path to try and find yourself again. I know with so many autistic and neurodivergent people who are getting a diagnosis later in life and the impact it has, not just the impact on understanding ourselves, but the impact is absolutely life-changing when we get this diagnosis. It does take some time to rediscover who you are, though. After what seems like a lifetime of never understanding the world, let alone yourself, you have to take the time to go back and re reflect on the life so you can move forward. So there I was, a middle-aged woman who had basically was starting life all over again. I had to untrain all the misconceptions about how I should behave, what was expected, and had to let go of what other people thought. That was a hard one. But my past started to make a lot more sense. When you don't understand yourself, it's hard to accept not just what is happening, but why it is it happening. It's virtually impossible to rationalise with yourself when you don't understand why you feel such like an outsider or feel like an alien. But these things change. So where does this story begin? It begins with you. It doesn't have to start at the beginning. And it doesn't have to feel like it's all over before you get a chance to begin. It's never too late to find happiness and more so contentment. And that is our ultimate goal, to find peace within, to find where we belong and to be valued for who we are. To repeat this after me, you can do this in your head. We deserve this. Now, at 53 years of age, I've finally transitioned into another phase of my life. Over 13 years later, I can actually say I've emerged on the other side. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, no, that would be a train, and you don't want to be standing there waiting for a train to run you down. But strange humour and metaphors aside, whoever came up with metaphors, that's a silly idea as well, we have every opportunity to step up and say, this is how I want my life to be, not that of the expected norm. This is my life and I want to visit my way. Repeat, this is my life. I can see you're all starting to get the hang of this. But how do we go about this? How can we bring happiness into our lives if we're feeling so entrenched in a system that doesn't work for us? We have to learn about ourselves to know ourselves well. When we know ourselves well, whether it be our sensory sensitivity, the type of friendships or relationships we want, knowing what takes or gives away our energy, knowing what our learning and thinking styles are, help us determine what our needs are and to be able to effectively advocate for ourselves. It allows us to confidently speak up for what we want or don't want. It allows us to speak up for others who may still be finding their voice. It allows us to be part of the much needed shift in our community and wider society through advocating for ourselves as individuals and together as one voice. It also allows us to find our tribe, to connect with the people who truly get us and embrace our uniqueness in all its wonderful shades and beauty. And it allows us to stop trying so damn hard to fit into everybody else's expectations and the moulding that everyone needs to behave and think and act the same way. Being uniquely different is not bad 
defective, damaged or broken. We just have different minds. We see, we hear, we smell and sense the world differently and that is absolutely okay. When we learn about ourselves, we can start to take a step back, reevaluate our lives and start rebuilding our lives. And you can do this your way. It's okay to reflect on what could have been if we'd known about our differences sooner, but we don't want to stay there. As with many people who are identified or self-identified later in life, experience and knowledge comes through learning about ourselves and embracing who we are. And it's from reflecting on past experiences, we certainly can start to realise what does and doesn't work for us. It is now time to find out what does. Differentness, differentness takes courage. It takes courage to step out of the ways we've been conditioned into believing and adhering to. It takes courage to stop, to say no and to speak out. And it takes courage to stand alone and choose what is right for you. I feel I have a lifetime experience of knowing what didn't work for me before I knew and learned about my unique neurology and ways of perceiving the world. I know your pain, I know your challenges, I know your heartache. I have been there, I have survived, and I have embraced who I am. And I have evolved into the person that I want to be, my authentic self. In some way, I hope my personal journey, journey, my stark openness about myself, and my relentless advocacy work and dedication to changing societal views of being inclusive to all types of minds is making a difference. I hope this opens up a doorway for you to step through, out into a new way of thinking and loving yourself for who you truly are. A step on a journey for you to explore. And as I encourage you to start or continue on your journey of self-discovery, self-determination and self-advocacy, I also want to reflect on the wider community and the global perspective of the past couple of years. And wow, hasn't it been a roller coaster ride and awakening for us all as well? Back in 2020, COVID was certainly not what I was expecting to be in store for a year that I and so many other people had as a goal of being, this is my year, I've got some big aspirations and visions ahead for the year. Being neurodivergent myself, I found the unexpected and quickly changing environment due to COVID-19 incredibly unsettling. As a person who loves to have routine and plan well ahead, the anxiety of the global changes of being told to stay home Having enforced lockdowns and restrictions imposed certainly burdened many people with a sense of impending doom and fear of what lay ahead. Even though I love working from home, my solitude and avoiding shopping centres, being thrown into a global pandemic without what seemed like hardly any notice or time to mentally prepare really did affect me in ways that I did not expect. As we know, many of us neurodivergent people are highly empathetic, especially to world events and what is happening around us. The full hit impact hit me early in April 2020, the start of the toilet roll shortages. That really did have me scratching my head at what the neurotypical population was up to and this illogical panic thinking. But more seriously, I felt the fear and pain of the world. I felt sad and scared what lay ahead, and so did many other people. I was highly anxious at what at the unknown. But it's through times of adversity and uncertainty that we learn to evolve, adapt, and change. The things that we've been told we, that could not be implemented now became the norm, and it also became a necessity and priority if we were to keep faith through those trying times. Society began to realise and embrace changes within work and practices. Workplaces changed to allow employees to work from home and adapted their working practices to make this happen. Zoom became our new workspace and gave us the ability to connect and work as teams from our homes where we could look professional from the waist up while wearing funky PJ bottoms and fluffy slippers below. And if we had a cat or dog, they were also welcome to join us on the camera with their cuteness and cheeky antics. Plus, we also had the added advantage of having our pets to keep us company while we worked. And we actually took more breaks as we allowed more flexibility in how we got our work done. 
we were given more autonomy over how we worked. In a time of pandemic, we saw the shift that was in favour of autistic and neurovergent people in something we have been constantly trying to break down the barriers and allowing far more flexibility in how and where we can work. As we know prior to COVID-19, many employers and businesses claimed it could not be done. It was too difficult to make changes to working practices that allowed people to work to the best of their ability and in a way that would also be considerate to their mental wellbeing. COVID changed that and for the better. COVID was the wake up call that we needed a society, not locally, but just not just locally, but globally. It has made us stop and think and care about how we do things differently with the safety of other people as a priority. COVID has forced us to think way outside of the box in terms of business and how to stay viable during this significant change we underwent. We also saw the good side of people, the compassion, the humanity that COVID helped resurface through finding ways to support each other. We became more conscious in supporting our small businesses to help them keep going. Our government's taking a step up to support people who had lost their jobs and the community staying connected while being forced to stay physically apart to ensure that we were kept all safe and well. When we are pushed, we often see the best come out in society. Innovation steps up, we adapt and we evolve. As we know, many people lost their jobs, making it so much harder in terms of finding work with the surge of unemployment. Through this catalyst of reduced available employment opportunities, we have seen the emergence of considering self-employment. With businesses having to change to online practices, it allows for people to gain a much more sturdier foothold in creating jobs for themselves. The larger business world acknowledge these changes as a viable and alternative option to having large workforce that they employ under one roof, to now having a choice through gaining staff on contract base that gives opportunity to many more people in becoming self-employed. This has given neurodivergent people the autonomy to be their own boss, setting the rules and the rates of pay, and it's on their terms. Business in this past and current climate is apprehensive to having large workforces, especially with the fear of past multiple lockdowns, which could happen again at any time, and the ability to provide sufficient work and to gain sufficient income in business. Having the choice on taking on contractors, reducing the fear of having to provide consistent regular work, to allowing people to provide their services on about their contract basis, by working this way, we, as neurodivergent people, can also work for more than one person or company. It gives us a sense of security over having to not rely on one employer to provide us with a job, work and income. And I know this with my own clients I work with. I have seen change through losses of jobs due to COVID. I have supported them through challenges of workplace, not understanding neurological differences and encouraging management and staff to learn more and to understand how to support autistic and neurodivergent people in the workplace. And then only to see the blow of COVID ending of this particular person's career along with many of their co-workers. But through this process, a sense of understanding of their own self, what supports the workplace and they themselves needed to assist them in making the working environment more suitable and less stressful, allow them to take that knowledge and to embark on a new career as a workplace mentor, assisting fellow autistic people in employment. They created for themselves a new career in self-employment that came from a very stressful and challenging period in their life that has now become an incredibly rewarding and fulfilling job. This is such a good example of when things appear to be bleak, there is always a chance to turn around and potentially turn it into something new and exciting. So looking to the future, I do think we have a bright one ahead, especially when experiencing the challenges we've all had in the past couple of years, and that it will have a lasting effect for years to come. These challenges and upheaval also do not necessarily mean they are negative. For me, I see this as a time of opportunity, a time of making further change, a time for genuine inclusion, changes to workplace and life practices, and the willingness to accept change and diversity in providing opportunity to everyone. 
As we grow as a community and in the reflection of these past years, we have also realised the great need in self-care and the importance of looking after our mental well-being. The pressures of typical workplace we're placing upon ourselves to work harder and longer effectively changed overnight when we're forced to make significant change that was out of our control. I've heard from the fear of losing a job, changing into a life-changing perspective of considering what is more important in life. Priorities shifted from an individual approach to that of reaching out for connection and support from others through the screens of our computers. I see a future ahead with this positive growth and compassion and re-evaluating of wellness and identifying personal and community values continue to shift into more compassionate and accepting world. It's events like this, neuroemergence, neuro that we are all contributing to this global shift through our independent and collective lens in working towards creating genuine positive change in supporting autistic and neurodivergent people. I embrace the impossibilities that lie ahead and look forward to continuing working together as a community in making productive opportunities happen. Where previously the old ways of shelved, the doors begin to open to genuine inclusion, acceptance and empowerment for all. Even in the toughest, toughest of times, there is always a light that will shine. Neurovergent, Neuroemergence 2022 is that shining light of empowerment, support, compassion and growth. And it is with a very big warm thank you from me to all of you. I am so very glad to be part of our amazing community and look forward to working together no matter where we are in the world and continuing making a difference an impact and a shift in the way the world views neurodivergence and embracing our different minds. Differentness takes courage. It just takes that first step. I am right here with you, cheering you on, and your neurodivergent tribe is there by your side along the way. I truly believe we can all make a difference. And with that, I wish you all a very happy Neurodiversity Pride Day and a wonderful day ahead with day three of a neuroemergence. Thank you. Thank you, Var. Oh, thank you. Thank you for for sharing your story and and for yeah, allowing us to witness you in, in your transformation. Um, 13 years might be, you know, not a long time yet, uh, when I see and from what I've heard and from what I, you know, from, from, from what I know, you've totally reinvented, not actually, I won't say reinvented, reconnected with who you are. And I've just shown that. Exactly. So exactly. It's dripping away all of this, the other stuff and finding who you are. And it's incredibly empowering. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that.